Hi everybody, I'll just um, click on share my screen. Here we go. Uh, and I hope everybody can hear me all right. And um, I'll start. There are a number of reasons um, for my choreographing in the Baroque style. And the, the main reason I suppose is that when I started my company, Consort de Dance Baroque, I wanted to have some group dances and there aren't many extant dances, you know, for groups. There, there's a load of duets, but I just felt that having duet after duet just wouldn't really work for a, an audience that may have very little understanding of what Baroque dances is. So um, that's how I started doing the choreographies. And then when I did a lot of teaching, I just felt that um, beginner students, there was only a couple of dances, you know, country dances with Baroque steps, or a particular dance called La Vieille Bourre, also known as uh, La Petite Bourre, um, that was nice and easy and just pattern based with only a pas de bourre, a ton de courant, and for the gentleman, a, a coupe with a leg gesture. Um, but the rest of them, even the ones that we consider quite easy, say Bourre d'Achille, still had a lot of um, steps that could be tricky for people if they've never done any dance before. So that's another reason for starting uh, and doing other choreographies. And I suppose my third reason is because I get inspired by the music and I have to try and stop myself sometimes. So um, there's various ways in which I actually approach a choreography. And it's quite interesting. I actually ended up choreographing dances purely from um, step sequences that I taught as technique in class. So the first one I'm going to show you is what developed um, from just a bure sequence mainly four um, bar phrase, two parabre de cote and um, a parabre par coupe. And then add into that four parabre and I made a dance, um, which I call the new Prince of Wales because I use the music from uh, Labbe's dance, the Prince of Wales. And I, I really like the music. It's from Handel Julius Caesar. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so that you can see the whole of the pattern. So this is for two couples, but they start out really doing exactly the same thing and they don't really interact with the other couple. And I'm just going to get my little spotlight, move that out of the way. Okay, so we've got the melody at the top as usual, and we've got the two couples. And I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger now and I'll just scroll. So, four par de berets, quite simply, two of them forward, holding hands and then letting go, and then casting out for two. And then the rule for me was next, two par de de cotes, and they're always on the side, and the first one always goes to the front of the room. So two par de de cotes, that's side behind and forward twice, and then par de beret par coupe crossing over. And the first time the gentlemen do that, they do a little turn on the spot so they can end up being forward. And then that repeats four par de berets, two to cast. Guess what? Dakota's on the side again. But instead of um, crossing over, they cross over but then take right hands. So now I'm going to do exactly the same phrase of steps, but rather than going forward and casting out, they now take hands. And so here's the next pattern. And they go two parabores around and then they cast out around their left shoulder. So they end up facing each other. And again, the rule is Dakota is on the side, but this time they're done in canon. So the gentlemen do one, then the ladies, then the gentlemen, then the ladies, and then they do the parabore par coupe again to take hands. And that pattern repeats two part of race to go around, two to cast around their left shoulder. And now the ladies are on the, the left-hand side and they lead the Dakota Cannon. They do one, the gentlemen, the ladies do one. And then we get the part of coupe pattern that the gentleman did, which is doing the twirl and it's the lady side that does that. So up till now, it's just been two couples dancing. And this is the first time that they then are going to actually dance as a foursome. And then my inspiration was a double figure of eight from a country dance. I'll just um, show this a little bit smaller. 
so here's the first couple and they're casting and crossing and casting now this is my original choreography and i ended up do, using it not so much for um, beginners but for my group and so i had contretemps part of beret contretemps part of beret it's a six bar phrase contretemps and par coupe and at the same time the, the second couple at the bottom are, are crossing and casting when I ended up using it a lot more for beginners, I decided I wouldn't use the contretemps to start with. I just have the six part of berets instead. It just depends really on the level of the students. If I get a lot of students who've done a lot of dance, obviously I can do uh, more complicated steps. And then it just changes slightly. So I'm just doing two part of berets into a canon of the Dakotas, but I just changed the um, canon. So the gentlemen do one, then they wait two bars while the ladies do their two. And then the gentleman does one and there's extra music. So they have two part of berets and a coupe to go all the way around rather than halfway around. And they let go hands. And they do their casting around their left shoulder to face in and then instead of doing the Dakotas completely facing each other everyone opens out on their Dakotas but again it's in canon so the gentlemen still lead then the ladies gentlemen ladies but their last uh, Dakota goes sideways in the last step and then they do a contretemps and a par coupe backwards to finish so there's not much of the dance that actually is looking um with two couples doing dance for four, like some of the other dances, a fantastic uh, rigodon for four that uses lots of patterns all the time. But this was ideally supposed to be a really, really simple uh, dance that wasn't too complicated, that could be done and performed, which has been in the past. So that's one of my first dances. Another dance, uh, well, in fact, a number of them actually, are in my new collection of Telemann dances. And I'm just going to get to the page I need. Um, and I'm going to show you um, a minuet for six. I'll just have to, ah, it's coming up. That's my Passapier for nine. I recognize it because it's got more figures okay coming up to it here we go it's the next one on here we go so i'll just make it a little bit smaller so you can see it now i started choreographing the teleman collection really because i was looking for some music to use at summer school for when i have live music and i found this wonderful um piece it's a wedding suite by Telemann and it has six um so sorry seven dances um that actually have music for it and then it just says Chacon at the end so I decided in my wisdom probably a very stupid idea really uh, to choreograph a whole load of dances um the different levels for one year at summer school and I choreographed the minuet actually for two uh, but um, when I was in class one time after the summer school, I had six students and I thought, well, we'll do this first pattern of the minuet. And I thought, oh, I could do a hay afterwards. So this ended up being a short version of the minu minuet because the music is just played AABB as opposed to the full length, which I've done AABB twice for my initial choreographies. So um, this is like a D shape. I'm just going to zoom out a bit interesting thing about notation of course is that it's all on the same line but it makes it look like people at the bottom are going wider but of course they're not so anyway it's it's six minuet bars so it's two minuets forward and then one to cast one to go back one to come in and one to go forward and having done that the a music repeats and this is again where i've taken i patterns from a country dance and here's um a figure eight so i think they call this a morris hay with the um, back people casting the other way and having done that they finish up facing each other i'll just make this a bit bigger everyone's doing pretty much the same thing uh, and this is where the b music starts so what i've got now is just parbancy forward and back and two half turn pirouettes but this is done in canon so it's in a one minuet bar canon so the first couple balance say forward and back and as they're pirouetting then the, so the second couple start uh, 
And as the second couple are pirouetting, the third couple starts, and then all together they face each other to balance and pirouette. And this is, I'm scrolling up a little bit more. And then they all take right hands and cast around their left. Again, a country dance pattern that I use quite a lot for my choreographies. And then the final figure is, is crossing left hands and then casting and then coming in and then retreating backwards. And a really simple dance pattern based and it has three step units, minuet in two movements and par balancing forward and back and two half turn pirouettes. But I, I do find that my beginner students do have a sense of achievement when they've managed to get through a whole dance. And another one I was going to show you from this um, particular collection is a bure because this was based on four separate technique um, exercises, um, sorry, four bars. Um, I'll just scroll down a little bit more. Four page 111. Move this a bit further. Here we go. So again, I'll pull out a little bit. The four bar phrases are cutting part of beret, two half turn pirouettes, and a par coupe. And that was one technique exercise that I would do with students, adding arms and it changes feet. So uh, basically, I just used it quite often, and another one for practicing of contretemps de gavotte, so it changes feet, just contretemps par de bray, contretemps par de bray. And then another phrase that I used in technique was par de bray de cote, par de bray, par de bray de cote, and ton de courant, which doesn't change feet. So I put these all together and then just um, repeated them. So going back, everybody goes forward. Every time you do the contretemps sequence, you cast out and come in. And when you do the Dakota sequence, um, you're crossing over and it's all mirror image and it starts again with the cutting and the two pirouettes and the coupe. Again, they cast out on the contretemps, part of coming back in, and they cross on the Dakota. But here, in the repeat of this, I just changed it so that the lady does a par coupe. So when they do their Dakota, they face the other direction and they both now have weight on their right foot. And then just for a bit of a change, they circle round for four bars, but then they come back to face in the front and the man this time does a coupe, so they go back to mirror image footwork, have two cutting, uh, sorry, one cutting part of array, the two pirouettes and the coupe. And as before, contretarm casting. So this, pattern changes again the shape, contretemps pas de beret, contretemps crossing pas de beret and Dakota's upstage diagonal and then curving in pas de beret and facing each other and then ton de courant. And then I added a little bit of canon and the lady contretemps off and does one pirouette and waits while the gentleman does a contretemps and, and a pirouette. And then she's in the meantime transferred her weight so they can go back into mirror image and they just circle round with right hands very briefly, three par de berets. And then final ones, so that's one, two, and the third one they have to change crossover. So the gentleman has a slightly different uh, shape of par de beret. He has to do a sideways step, so front, side, behind really. And then they're turning towards each other at the finish of the dance. And that's it. So three four bar phrases in, made into a dance. Not the most exciting dance, I'll agree. Absolutely. Um, but um, okay for, for people who have not very much experience. So it works. And what I'm going to do now is actually show you a video of a dance. I don't have the notation. Um, the dance I'm going to show you is actually now called the triumphing dance. Originally it was a saraband for five that I choreographed uh, because I needed a dance um, at an end of an Easter course that I was doing because we were going to do a performance with um, Baroque players. And I had five students in the group, two gentlemen and three ladies. And we'd 
they'd all worked on the Saraband for five, which was, uh, sorry, a Saraband um, eight bar phrase, which is what I used. And I just had two ordinary part de berets, two quickened rhythms, part de beret, par coupe, and two pirouettes. And I made a dance using those phrases. Um, however, I, one of my productions, I had to do um, dances for Dido and Aeneas. And again, I didn't have much time. And so I sometimes, well, quite often actually, reuse my own dances. So I thought, oh, this might work, because I did have uh, um, five women for this. And it worked really well. The thing is, the triumphing dance music um, from Dido and Aeneas is actually a chacon so it moves at a much faster pace so I had to take out the quick and rhythm um, part of berets and also um, spatially we didn't have as much depth so instead of having um, the part of berets going forward I had a two bars rest at the start actually and then a two single steps which didn't travel too far forward and I'm now going to stop this share so I can then reshare it um, because I want to now share the video and I'm hoping that you'll all be able to hear this. This was um, just an informal lecture demonstration at one of my summer schools and I hope you'll all be able to hear it. <laughs> So that was the triumphing dance. I'm now going to go back to sharing my screen. And we're going to look at a dance that inspired me to choreograph a dance for three, another one. I've done quite a few for three. I just reconstructed this dance years ago when I was studying with Wendy Hilton in America. And um, I just love the way it worked. And as far as I'm aware, it's still um, no other dances for three have been found. Um, and I just love the way they did a couple of bars and had a middle person doing a little echo of it. I, obviously the title of the dance gives it away a bit, but I just really uh, liked it. And so I, I love that idea of, of the echo effect, the canon effect. And I suppose from a practical point of view, it actually uses up more music, doesn't it? With, uh, with um, fewer steps having to be danced. Okay, and the other thing that I was inspired by was this. This is um, the um, Allemande, l'Allemande. And I just love this dance and I love the Allemande handhold and the um, little four bar phrase of two coches trompe ballonnet, part of beret and assemblée step, and then it would change direction. And I, I love the figures on this um, accent dance showing you um, how you're supposed to hold the hands because they didn't um, use any um, symbols to, to illustrate that and how it goes the other way. So I actually then choreographed using those ideas, plus using the music from Lalmond, which I liked, and I had a recording, because that's another issue if I'm going to be choreographing dances, is have I got the, the good you know, music in order to use? So 
um, I just took those ideas. Instead of having the outside uh, people do the um, lead of the canon, I had the middle person do it. So I'm going to stop this share and then reshare video. And I'm hoping this is going to work. If I go to the next video. <laughs> going to go in, uh, directly into showing you another dance and uh, this is another video and this is using um, my Telemann music again and this is a rigodon for five. I'd already choreographed numerous dances for five and so to make sure I managed to not do all the same patterns I always try and start the dances in, in a different uh, starting position so I chose um, a different dance um, patterns where I had two men, three women, I had the three women in the back row and I'm just going to put the video on and then you'll be able to see it for yourself. It uses very few steps, pas de bray, pas coupe, could be the first pas de rigodon are the main ones. Here we go. <laughs> I only had the recorded music for the full length, so I ended up um, just stopping the music. Um, now, that used very few um, step units, um, but the use of canon really makes a difference, I think. And it, uh, again, it's going from a wedge into a circle, which I, that pattern I also used when I was doing the choreography for the Saraband for Five, which became the triumphing dance. Hasn't really moved back to the Saraband, except if I teach beginners. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you is a dance. Again, it's very Queen music. I've got quite a few of those. Uh, this is the first act tune jig. And I'm afraid this is one of my occasions when I hadn't much time to choreograph anything new. So I reused my Telemann jig for three. Um, the 
structure of the music in the B is two bars longer in the jig, so uh, I had to add on another couple of bars on the B music. So I just extended uh, the couple of bars for the spiral and then I did a bit of canon at the end. So I think I'm just going to go back and I could show you the jig notation, but I'm just trying to be aware of the time, so get through a few things. So I'm going to go back into sharing TV and film and we'll move on to the next one so this should be um the jig for three so here we go oh i pulled the wrong way i'm so sorry there we go was performed um, on the final day of my one of my summer schools um, where we did some um, short 20 minute demonstrations at Tradiga House which is a 17th century manor house that's just outside Cardiff and I'm now going to show you another uh, dance that's also from the same year and this is a dance for the haymakers again from the fairy queen um, and I started this dancing in the pattern of a quinkens and i used the a music to do an eight bar phrase of steps uh, quite simple really two pas de berets two par coupes in a bar a pas de beret crossing and two jeté chassés pas de en boite and a pas de cisson en boite and i also use a four bar phrase of two demi contretemps pas de beret pas de cisson and pas de beret en boite and again um, there's quite a bit of use of canon and it, well, there's five again so I've got a wedge shape and I've got circles but I, I believe they're still different to the other two for five that I'd choreographed <laughs> to show you uh, one more uh, dance which is also the fairy queen um, and I'm afraid most of these dances haven't been notated yet um, I've got quite a few that I'd like to get uh, published but it's time and money the usual things that are before the baroque dancer aka baroque dancer um, so 
this is where I suppose musical structure really had an effect on the choreography. The music's a rondo, so the A music kept repeating. So I used um, a sequence of steps that I then reused and they returned throughout the piece. And the other thing I wanted was I really wanted mirror image pattern and footwork. So I actually decided that we would do mirror image work. So uh, we do get minuets on the left foot. There are a couple of um, examples of extant dancers that have the occasional minuet, minuet on the left foot. So um, anyway, it's only a, a demi coupe and a part of a ray or fleur. So I don't see that it really matters. Anyway, I um, had originally choreographed this for three men and three women. And when they divide up into two groups of three, you had a man leading one and a lady leading the other. But in latter times, I've only had two gentlemen dancing. And to make it work choreographically, I put the two men in the middle. And this meant when they split into the two groups, you had the two men leading the two ladies. And in fact, I've never really gone back to using the three men and three women in this dance, even when I did have the opportunity to do so. So um, this is um, part of a lecture demonstration again. Uh, so. And nobody said anything, I'm assuming, and uh, there's nothing in chat. So I'm assuming people are hearing it and able to see the video and I hope it's not going crazy. So I'm living in hope that that's, everything's okay. Yeah. Good, all right. It seems to be fine, Philip. Oh, lovely, great. Wow. So I'll go back to sharing my, and make sure I click the arrow the correct way. So we should now be going into the Fairy Queen, uh, the Rondo, uh, minuet and the music actually is the second music and it's number four <laughs> Just get rid of a few of these. Oh, I want to keep that one. Right, what I'm actually going to show you now is, I'm not sure you could call it really um, inspiration. It's more um, influence and actually I just used steps from a dance that I love. Um, I used to dance this, it's a lure and hornpipe and um, by Isaac, and I just love it, especially the, the contrast between the two um, rhythms. Just going to get my little spotlight again. So I actually used the first eight bars. I don't know if everybody's uh, familiar with um, hornpipe, but it's absolutely amazing. that You can do up to three step units in a bar. In this particular dance, they have three par quick par coupes in a bar. Um, here you have a contretemps ballet and a quick coupe. And here you have a, a quick part of beret into a contretemps ballet which crosses the bar, which I also found really interesting. Um, and so here I used all this up to here. 
and then a little bit further on, in fact. So I used these step units in this dance. And I also used um, another sequence of steps, this one here. So um, I don't know, you could call it a um, step cut jetés um, and then the, maybe a glissade assemblé. Um, the thing is when you get to a bit more complicated dances, um, the steps don't necessarily have a name and they might be a combination of a number of things. Anyway, so I use this step sequence and with the turning cosh tom in two movements and part de beret up to here. And I put those together and made a hornpipe. Um, let me just see. There's one other pattern I use, the steps from another dance. Um, and this is the La Paysanne from Man and a Woman. And I used a four bar phrase here. And this is Chasse, jete, chasse, chasse, jete, chasse, traveling backwards and forwards, which I, I really liked. I thought it was it was a, a great, um, and it's a really brilliant dance, actually. Um, and it's not that these dances aren't good because some of them are absolutely fantastic, but it's getting the people who are able to do them. And also, so many of these good dances are duets, and I just want to have variety when I'm doing a production. Okay, so um, this is the hornpipe uh, to the Fairy Queen, and I'm going to stop this share so I can go back and share the video. Perhaps people should have brought popcorn, I'm showing so many videos. Um, oh yes, I think this video, um, Yes, this is actually done at that Tradiga house again, but it was before the audience were let in and um, it was just to check the tempo. So you'll hear my voice over it. So sorry about that. But it, it was just um, trying to find time to um, go through the things with the musicians. As you know, how, there's very little time when you're performing. Here we go. <laughs> So there you can see that I use the same sequence of steps that were actually in the duet and I use for the outside people the same um, figure, the same shape, which was uh, started at the beginning and, and finished at the end. Uh, and in between you had a little bit more of the pastoral, especially the step cut step, uh, step cut assemblé. And I'm now going to um, share my screen again. And we're going to look at this choreography. Um, and it's an entree de paysanne. And I love character steps, they're great fun. And this pattern here, and I'm just gonna have to move this up a little bit, it just gets in the way. Um, I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so here you have a hop and a step. And then another two hops with a foot beats in behind and then in front and the step. So you've got hop, step, beat, beat, step, and that beat, beat, step repeats. And I use this um, step sequence in the um, next dance I'm going to show you. Um, I really like that uh, step unit. Um, and 
even more interesting is a bit further on. There's this sequence of steps here. Where you're hopping on one foot and the um, this right foot in this instance, I'll make it a bit bigger for you. You're striking the foot with the heel and the toe as you go, so you're making a sound. And, and you're traveling at the same time. So I, I really like this. And I use this also in the choreography. Um, and there are other step units that I used. And you'll actually notice that you might recognize them from having seen the hornpipe first. But in fact, the tambourine got choreographed before the hornpipe. And so, in fact, I was using a contretemps part of very sideways and contretemps putting the heel down before the toe. You might have noticed that and um, um, beat a spring spring stamp as well from another uh, choreography. So just going to share. This should be now Tambra. Now, um, this is actually my last video. Um, and this was um, actually for Welsh television. It was filmed at Margam Park and it was for a filler to program fillers and the original choreography was just dance but um, for the TV we added in a little scenario with a gentleman and so as you normally get with um, TV um, videos recordings of dances you get close-ups and you see the musicians and see other action that's happening so you're not going to see the whole dance but I hope it'll give you an idea and flavor of the um the dance itself utilizing some of the steps that you've just seen on the notation yes yes about the next video i just wanted to say that I'll, I'll give you a 10 minute warning <laughs> oh right well i'm actually all right because this is my last one to show so i i'm I probably i i maybe um left out a couple of things just to make sure that i got had time but thank you so um yeah. Nobody's got any questions before I move on to that last video, do they? No? Okay. Um, right, well, I'll go back to this next one then. So um, this is the uh, tambourine. Music's by Ramo, by the way. Oh, it also is because it's been taken from a, a very old um, VHS video. It sounds like somebody's frying bacon in the background, but they're not, honestly. At least I didn't see anyone doing it.
Um, does anybody want to see one of those videos again? I haven't actually got rid of them. They're still on my desktop. So I could um, show one or two again or talk about um, any of the steps and things. This one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can talk through it if people want. This is part of the eight bar phrase. dances for five so I try to make them start in a different position because it really makes a difference to um, how the choreography develops and when I've done uh, I've got a number of dances for six as well when I got three couples um, I tell you what I could show oh, there looks to be one thing in chat oh right mm. Do I have a group? Um, well, I have a group called Consult de Dance Baroque that has um, a core of people, and then I have other students as well. So there's a, there's a yeah a mix, and some of these from quite a long time ago as well, you know. So um, what I could show you, if you're interested, is I can show you um, the Teleman Passapie for nine. Unfortunately, with the recording in on the repeat, one of the dancers goes wrong. But um, I could show you that if you wanted to see. Um, something for more people um, or I could show you again if you want to see one of the ones I've already talked about again that would be fine too. I think the one with nine would be interesting to see. Okay, that's okay. Uh, yeah is that all right with other people? Yeah. Um, and it only uses minuet in three movements, balance forward and back, two half turn pirouettes and contretons. I've got to find it because it might be in my reserve. Um, so this means a little bit more of a fiddle. And reserve dances. I just have to fiddle about with this. Okay, and I've got to go back to sharing. Whether I can, here we go. All right, so I apologize that it does go wrong um, and I'd be tempted to actually stop it, but I, I won't so you can see the patterns. Uh, so here we go. This is a passapier for nine. <laughs> Thank you. 
you see what I mean? There's a little bit of an error there. <coughs> beautiful, the beautiful patterning. Really lovely to see. Oh, thank you. I have the notation. That's in my. If you want to have a look at the notation, it's in my um, Telemann collection that I recently published. Um, and I need to just go back a little bit. These were all notated by Judith Appleby. I think I've gone too far, hang on. That was the Blu-ray, it's coming up then. Sorry, here we go. Right, so just make it a bit smaller so you can see it. Oh, actually, maybe actually 50% might make it easier to see. Okay, so uh, as you probably noticed, I used a lot of cannon in that dance. Now, originally it's for three men, um, but um, didn't have three men then. Um, so obviously I had to make do with another lady. There's always plenty of ladies. It's very rarely do we have, uh, um, you know, a lack of ladies, basically. Although one time in one of my classes I did, I ended up having, I think, seven men and like two women. It was unheard of. Right. So as you can see, the either um, take it in turns to can and it's, and it's just par balance, they fall them back and, and pirouettes. And here's the second page. I'll just make it a fraction bigger. And this has ended up being notated, as you can see, in... Um, uh, contra dance notation because um, it's just been much too busy so much easier to see this and only when the steps weren't the three movements were they notated so you got um, the canons of balance and pirouette and then this little figure actually where the gentleman's facing two women in turns with one and the other one does a parallel circle actually I use that um, choreographic idea which was from um, the next you know a late colleague of mine, Peggy Dixon, and um, she had reconstructed a dance, a 15th century one called Pellegrina, and she used this pattern in it, and I just loved it so much. I used it for another Passepier for three, actually, which was choreographed before this, and um, so I reused this here, which I really liked. So, and then they do the other side, and then it breaks up. So <clears throat> the gentlemen go to the back, so they're doing a hay or half a hay, and the women are going forward and doing little circles, and they follow the leader. And then the ladies end up actually in a line, and the middle man is doing stuff by himself. And then the other two men um, are actually weaving through, and when the number one ladies come through, they're going round the number one gentleman. And then it repeats again, but in, instead of the um, middle three being in front, they're behind, and um, the outsides then start the cannon going forward to minuets, balance, and pirouette. And then we get another division. So we have the number one gentleman with all, um, with most of the ladies except the number one ladies. They stay at the top. So then we have five, and they're just circling around and casting with the stars here at the equal contraton minuet rhythm that she was actually its notation in the echo um, in the minuet section of the dance that I showed earlier and um, and here then the ladies are weaving with the two men and then they end up doing right hands with each other well mirror image actually hands while the others are circling around again and then they all go from their final patterns and believe it or not they actually end up where they started uh, and that's the dance. Um, I'm quite Maybe. pleased with that one. 